And I'm going to pick it up in verse 1 before we go on to the ones on the screen. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee of the Gentiles by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increase their joy. They, they rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, every warrior's boot used in battle, and every garment rolled in blood will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's been said there are four stages in life. First, when you believe in Santa Claus. Second, when you're not sure you believe in Santa Claus. Third, when you are Santa Claus. And fourth, when you look like Santa Claus. <laughs> and just glancing around the room tonight, I think a lot of us would understand what those last two stages are all about. Let's be brutally honest tonight. Christmas is a bit of a hassle sometimes, isn't it? It's certainly expensive. It's been projected that Americans as a whole will spend more than $450 billion this year on Christmas. All to celebrate the coming of a child who was born into abject poverty. So considering all the costs and, and, and all the hassles that the holiday season brings with it, uh, we, we can understand the, uh, the prayer of a young child and forgive us our Christmases as those who Christmas against us. So we should ask ourselves one simple question this evening. Why? Why do we do all of this? It's not just to celebrate, show off to our neighbors how well we're doing. Not everybody had a great year in 2019. No matter what those Christmas Brad letters may tell you, you know the ones? It's been a good year for our family. Bob got a promotion and is now the emperor of his company. <laughs> Susan offered an IPO on her home-based scrapbooking business. It's now worth $2.4 billion. Bob Jr. graduated from both Harvard and Yale simultaneously. <laughs> and Paisley, well, her work with the Dalai Lama has won her the, the Nobel Peace Prize again. <laughs> Don't you love friends like that who are just so willing to share? They're a great treasure and inspiration to all of us. For God bless them, that's not the reality for most of us, is it? For many of us tonight, I think our lives are probably more like the lives of the people that the prophet of old Isaiah knew, a people who lived in a land of unrest and upheaval, in a time of unsettledness. You see, Isaiah knew what was coming to his country when he spoke these words, sometime between 700 and maybe 680 B.C., he understood that because of its faithlessness that the southern kingdom of Judah was already doomed, going to hell in a handbasket, that their sins would come home to roost. 
just like their brothers to the north in Israel had. He had watched as the Assyrians had hauled off the Israelites, in fact, quite often dragging them by ropes attached to rings in their noses. He knew it was just a matter of time before that happened to Jerusalem and to Judah as well. If not by the Assyrians, then by the Babylonians who were even worse than the Assyrians. Even in Naphtali and Zebulon, upper and lower Galilee, Galilee of the Gentiles, because there were so many non-Jewish people living around them, uh, there too his people had abandoned their God, not all at once, not overtly, uh, but over time, they'd simply compromised and accommodated the pagan beliefs of their neighbors, so offensive to the true God of Israel. Isaiah was nothing if he wasn't a realist. He saw the people of his land were walking in darkness, koshek, obscurity, dimness, living in the shadows, the, the sol of maveth, of death. But Isaiah also saw something else, which was that a change was coming. For he said that all because of the impending birth of one small child, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress, no more gloom. Doesn't that sound good? Because the people living in darkness have seen a great light. That is to say, those who lived under the deep shadows of life, in ignorance, in misery, and sin, have now been offered a way out of that darkness, and that way began with the birth of a baby, which we remember and celebrate at this season, even 2,000 years later. See, this is ultimately the only something that's worth celebrating at Christmas. That the shadows of life can be lifted tonight because uh, unto us has come not simply a wonderful counselor, uh, but a counselor who can do wonders with the tangled and mixed up and screwed up lives that we may offer to him. That unto us has come not simply a mighty God, but a God who is willing to use his might on your behalf and on my behalf. A God who is in the very literal sense of those words wants to be our hero and our defender our protector and our guide. A God who is willing in the lovely symmetry of verses 4 and 6, and I'll confess to you, I've been a pastor 42 years. I just saw this yesterday for the first time in Isaiah. The symmetry of verses 4 and 6 to take the bar of oppression off of our shoulders and put the bar of the burden of government of the world upon his own. That unto us has come not simply an everlasting father, the Ad Ab, but the father of the future as well, as you could translate those words. He is one who has promised to eternally be a father and to act like a father. A real father. A good, good father, we sometimes sing. Father to us in a way that he loves us continually and consistently, even if incoherently and incomprehensibly, forgives us. But unto us and into this world has come not only the Prince of Peace, but a Prince who is willing and ready to replace all of the doubts and confusion, all of the hurt and the anxiety, all the sadness and all the fear in each of our lives with the kind of surpassing peace that can drive those shadows away as the sunlight shatters the night. That unto us has come someone who is willing, who is able to change calamity into blessing and ignorance into knowledge and sin into salvation and even death into life. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And as curious as that may sound, I believe tonight that Isaiah meant for us to understand him very literally at this point. Unto him, unto you, unto me, unto us, a child is born, a son is given. You can translate the Hebrew word ben, which we translate as son, as grandson, if you like, which I definitely do. 
Because what that means is that he's ours. <laughs> well, we didn't father him. We didn't carry him and bear him. But he's ours. No less than if we had. You see, God sent him not just into the world, not just into his immediate family, not just to Joseph and Mary, uh, but he sent him into each and every one of us too. In fact, even into all those who lived before him and those who have come after him. So look carefully once more in that crutch tonight, my friends. Because Isaiah has news for you. That's your baby. That's your baby there. And mine. And if you understand that, then I suspect that in the end, you, despite how good or bad things may go for you as of late, that you will rejoice tonight. Because you see, not everything has to be perfect for it to be good. Amen? Faith is not about having a crappy life and pretending that it's not so. It's not about ignoring the very real hard things that may come to some of us. Some folks may be alone this evening, some by choice, maybe not. Some folks may have had a spouse or a child, but lost them. Some folks may have had a family, but lost it too. Some folks may be dealing with depression or, or with disease or with defeat or struggling with sadness or with sorrow. But the message of this night is about understanding that when Jesus Christ came, we turned the corner, so to speak. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Maybe not all at once. Maybe not quite as clearly as we might like. But I'm going to tell you, wherever we've let that light shine, it has made all the difference in the world. Just as Isaiah saw so many centuries ago, what began in the heart of God has now come down to reach the hearts of men and women, just like you and just like me. So have you let that light penetrate your heart? It's not I want to tell you that all the presents and all of the parties in the world, all the good times and, and, and all the merriment, all the family gatherings and festive occasions, they will never fill the bill for you. Christmas will be a perpetual disappointment for every year when the last gift is opened and the last game is over, and the last gist has left, you may be left wondering once more, in the words of that plaintive song of the 1970s, is that all there is? Is that all there is? On the other hand, if you do receive the Christ child as your guest and your gift this Christmas, if you open up your heart to his light, you let it shine there, then nothing, absolutely nothing on earth will be able to prevent you from having a happy Christmas, even if the kids don't come home this year. Even if your in-laws won't go home. <laughs> even if the gifts don't fit and the parties flop. And the turkey turns out not to have been a good food choice after all. It won't matter. It won't matter. For unto us a child is born. A son has been given. I love the latitude of those words in Isaiah uh, as he expresses it. Uh, a gift has been added, applied, appointed, described, assigned, charged, committed, directed, delivered, granted, rendered, requited, restored, sent out, set forth, and submitted to you and me. A son has been given free bestowment of a loving God to every one of us who are his children tonight. Whether we know it or not. He's come into the world so that even if our lives right now seem to be overwhelmed with darkness, fears about the future or anxiety about the past or nervousness about our families or our finances or our work or with hatred and jealous prejudices still seeming to rule over our hearts. I haven't even mentioned the turmoil in our politics from impeachment to the Iowa caucuses. Even if all those things that cause us to be concerned or worried tonight, he's come so that we might have life and have it in abundance.
so that we might find forgiveness and learn how to practice it with other people so that we may finally discover the strength we've needed to overcome our own sinful habits and begin to walk in the ways of a pure and clean life. As Paul Scherer once expressed it, God walked down the stairs of heaven with a baby in his arms. <laughs> and now that baby belongs to you and to me. The story is told of a family that stopped in at a small restaurant on the day before Christmas while traveling to see all their relatives. The mother noticed that they were the only folks in the cafe that had a small child, but it seemed okay, and so she set her baby Eric into the high chair. She turned her attention over to the menu, but suddenly Eric began to squeal with glee, and he said, hi there. He pounded his baby hands on the high chair. His eyes were wide open with excitement. He wiggled and giggled in joy at something facing him. And when his mother turned around to see what it was, her eyes fell upon a man with a tattered rag of a coat, dirty, greasy, and worn. His pants were baggy, his, his toes poked out of his would-be shoes, his, his shirt was dirty, he, his hair was uncombed. They were too far away to smell him, but Eric's mom was sure that he must have smelled because the man was obviously drunk. His arms were waving and flapping as he called out, hi there baby, I see you buster. And then he began to shout from across the room, do you know patty cake? Do you know Peter Boo? Eric's father and mother ate in silence, trying in vain to ignore their baby's unsolicited new playmate, while Eric himself ran through his whole repertoire uh, for his admiring Skid Row audience. When they finally finished the meal, Eric's father went to pay the bill, and, and as his wife began to head for the door, she prayed silently, Lord, just let me get out of here before he speaks to me or to Eric again. She even turned her back in an attempt to step around the man and avoid any air that he might be breathing as she walked right past him. But then before she knew it, something happened, and, and Eric propelled himself from his mother's arms into those of his new friend. And suddenly, a very smelly old man and a very young baby tangibly expressed their love for each other. Eric, in an act of total trust, laid his tiny head upon the man's rather rugged shoulder. The man in turn closed his eyes and Eric's mother saw tears hovering between his eyelashes. His aged hands, so full of grime and pain and hard labor, gently, ever so gently, cradled the baby and stroked his back. And then he opened his eyes and he said to Eric's mother in a firm, commanding voice, you take good care of this baby. She promised she would. And when the man pried Eric from his chest and handed him back to his mother, he said simply, God bless you, you have given me my Christmas. She got to the car, her husband noticed she was holding Eric very tightly in her arms and crying. And all she kept saying was, my God, my God, forgive me. See, its mother had just witnessed Christ's love shown through the innocence of a tiny child who saw no sin, who made no judgment, who saw a soul while his mother saw only a suit of dirty clothes. And the word from on high came and said simply, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Congratulations. It's a boy. And he shall be the salvation of us all. Amen.